You know, Frederick Douglass said that power concedes nothing without a demand. What are, what are we here for this morning? What are we here to, we're not here to whisper and say, please, please give us statehood. Um, um, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, when you get around to it, could you kind of, you know, make, give, give us our rights? What are we here to do? We're here to demand statehood! Demand statehood! We're here for our rights! When I say D.C., you say statehood. D.C. Statehood! D.C. Statehood! When I say D.C., you say statehood. D.C. D.C. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing this morning? My name is Alma Kuwerti, and I'm the National Organizing Director for the League of Women Voters of the United States. The people who call Washington, D.C. home deserve full representation and self-government, simply to be equal to the people in the states. As a majority minority city, D.C.'s 700,000 residents pay federal taxes, serve in juries, fight for the United States in the military, and raise families as Americans, and deserve the same rights as every other American. It is discriminatory to subject the people of D.C. to the whims of the United States Congress and its president. Statehood for Washington, D.C. is the only permanent solution to end this century's old injustice. A couple of points on that. D.C.'s population, it's larger than the populations of Wyoming and Vermont and nearly as many as Alaska, North Dakota, and South Dakota. And the people of D.C. pay more taxes than 22 states and pay more per capita to the federal government than any other state. Yet, the district has no U.S. senators and no voting congress. In a true democracy, this lack of representation cannot stand. The fight for this statehood is a fight not only for representation, but for racial justice. Consider this. Washington, D.C., a majority of color jurisdiction, is the only capital of a democratic nation that denies its residents a vote in the federal legislature. In 2016, 86% of D.C. voters backed the statehood resolution on the ballot, yet Congress has for decades made racist accusations that D.C. can't govern itself and refused to vote on statehood. This is plain discrimination, and it hurts D.C. residents the most. Yeah, that's right. yeah. The League of Women Voters has been advocating for the full rights of the people of D.C. since 1938, and we have been traveling with D.C. residents through all the various attempts to bring equality to D.C. I would like to give a strong shout out to the League of Women Voters of Washington, D.C. who are here today, who lead us in this important work and inspire us all. The League of Women Voters is committed to the fight for D.C. statehood today, tomorrow, as long as it takes until D.C. residents are fully enfranchised in our democracy. It is time to right this wrong. Thank you. If you're glad to be alive, say now. now. If you believe in D.C. statehood, say now. now. If you know we can overcome the obstacles, say now. now. Look at your neighbor and just say we're going to do it now. now. My name is Donald Isaac, and, that's, and uh, it was not too many weeks ago that we stood with over 50 clergy in the District of Columbia who came together on Emancipation Day to show our support for the issue of D.C. statehood. Today I'm proud to say that I'm here representing over 300 clergy, not only in D.C. but around the country, who have signed on to a letter to say that we believe not only is D.C. statehood the right thing to do, but now is the time to do it. So we come today as clergy to say that we answer the call. We thank you for answering the call. We come today as clergy to say that we're committed not for it to come later, but for it to come now. And that we want, we come now as clergy to say that we're going to continue, lock hand in hand, Baptists, Methodists, Episcopal, Jews, Muslims, non-believers, agnostics, everybody together for the cause of statehood. If you believe we can do it, say now. God is good. who this uh, city will be 
named at this state will be named after said power concedes nothing without demand and so we are here today demanding our representation in Congress. We are demanding for us to have full rights and representation, which we have been denied for way too long. This rally was said to be about the ways in which DC statehood is about racial justice. So let's talk about that for one moment, right? This is something that has happened since Reconstruction. When they looked at a district like the DC area and they saw a population of black and brown residents flourishing and leading and being leaders in their community. And they did not like the fact that we were holding so much power, that we had so much representation and leadership in the city. And so what they did was take an opportunity and say, well, they can't run their government, we need to do it. They don't know what they're doing, we need to stay up and do it. And so DC statehood is absolutely a racial justice issue. We are talking about a city where black and brown residents have built this city, and I mean literally built this city. If you go down to the African American Museum and you learn a w the ways in which the monument was built, the Capitol was built, and all of the hands that did that and put that together, architects, black architects in this city who put this city together. We were just at Lafayette Pointer in in Chevy Chase where we just renamed that center after a black architect who absolutely helped shape this city and the ways in which this city uh, planning has happened. So black people have been a part of the building, the planning, the architect, and the leadership of this city. And so when we talk about DC statehood, we cannot not talk about the racial justice implications that come with it. And so we stand before you today a united district diverse in so many ways, saying if none of us, if, all, if none of us are free, all of us at this moment are not free, so none of us are free. And because none of us are free, we are bringing our fight to the Capitol steps. We are saying to every Democratic Senator, Joe Manchin, I'm looking at you, we are saying to every Republican Senator that this is a matter of partisanship, this is a matter of right, this is a matter of democracy, and we will not allow this disenfranchised to, to conclude and con uh, go on any longer. So I want to thank all of you. I want to thank the 51st State. I want to thank the D.C. Statehood Coalition. I want to thank D.C. Vote. I want to thank every single person who's standing out here in this rain willing to fight for representation for D.C. As our mayor has said before, I was born without representation, but I will not die without it. When I say D.C., you say statehood. D.C.? DC! When I say 51st, you say stay! 51st! Stay! 51st! Stay! Let's make it happen, y'all. Thank you so much. We want to thank you. We want to welcome you this morning. We want to thank you for your sponsorship of this very important bill and for your support of this very important issue. So God bless you. This is a better sound with over 350 clergy leaders from DC and around the country who are supporting you in your effort to get this bill through. God bless you. With this letter, we're going to go straight to heaven. 350 ministers signed it. Well, it's raining a little bit, but it's going to take more than a little bit of rain to dampen the spirits of the people of the District of Columbia. I uh, have a couple of sons who are grown, and, uh, but I remember when uh, they were in school, and they'd start their school days every day, and they would start to like uh, school children across the country by rising to uh, to say the uh, pledge to the flag. And they would say these, uh, these words. We the people of the United States of America, in order to form a more perfect union. In Delaware, we're the first state to ratify the Constitution. That's the preamble of the Constitution. But the pledge to our flag goes a little bit different. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The pledge to our flag doesn't say, with liberty and justice for some. It says, with liberty and justice for, 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 for. 
for uh, 245 years, 37 states have entered the uh, con uh, 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 the, the become a state. They've entered this uh, this nation. 37. They've all followed the same constitutional path. There are a lot of people who say a D.C. state bill is not constitutional. Well, there's going to be a bunch of constitutional scholars that are hearing this morning will say that is wrong. It's the yeah. same path. 37 other states, every one since 1791, have followed. And we're going to follow that same path all the way to statehood. Yeah. 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 We're a nation of many faiths. We're Hindu, we're Buddhist, we're Muslim, we're Protestant, we're Catholic, we're Jew. But all those faiths have one thing in common, golden rule. Treat other people the way we want to be treated. Love thy, love thy neighbor as thyself. And the, 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 the citizens of the District of Columbia want to be treated like our neighbors. And they are, and our legislation makes sure that that's the way they'll be treated. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 245 years ago, we fought our war of independence against the mightiest nation on earth. And 13 little colonies took on the Brits, and we beat them. And we beat them. Today, the citizens of the District of Columbia have no interest in a, a war for independence. They simply want to be treated fairly and justly. And now they're not. I'll give you a couple examples. It's not just, well, let alone, first of all, the people of this uh, district pay more on a per capita basis in taxes than any other state in the nation, more than anybody else. Men and women of this, we have people in this uh, district who serve in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, the National Guard. They don't have a vote in the Congress. They pay more taxes than any other state. They have a much better credit rating than any of the other states. They, uh, yeah, the Congress has to approve their, their budget. Congress has to approve their, their judges. And when we uh, don't do that, we leave judgeships vacant for weeks, months, and years. Justice denied, justice delayed is justice denied. Yeah. So what do we do about it? What do we do about it? Here, that's what we're gonna do about it. We're gonna become a state. We're gonna, we're gonna become a state. And uh, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna quit. We're not gonna give up until it, it happens. There's a, a fellow named Mark Twain I wanna, uh, Quote, actually, I think I'll paraphrase Mark Twain. Mark Twain used to say these words. In the end, do what's right. You'll amaze your friends and confound your foes. Think about that. In the end, do what's right. You'll amaze your friends and confound your foes. At the end of the day, we're going to do what's right. We're going to amaze our friends. We're going to confound our foes. We're going to make the District of Columbia a state, the 51st state. And that, from Delaware, the first state, we will welcome you warmly into the fold. God bless you. Let's go do it. Thank you. How's everybody doing? Is DC in the house? Yes. That wasn't loud enough. I, I'm born and raised in Washington, DC. Is DC in the house? Yes. We got to make sure that they know DC is in the house. Is DC in the house? Yes. Once again, my name is Diallo Brooks. I'm a native Washingtonian. I work for People for the American Way. I'm the Senior Director of Outreach and Mobilization for the organization. We have 1.5 million members around the country that are standing in solidarity with Washington, D.C. to fight for statehood. This, this, this is a critical issue. This is a critical moment in history. Our voting rights are under attack in this country. Those of us that have been in Washington, D.C. understand that more than anybody else in this country. Because we're ground zero for the tyranny of not having full representation and full right to vote in this country. And I don't just mean casting a ballot at the ballot box. I mean also having a representative that's able to cast a ballot in the halls of Congress, in both chambers of Congress. We're at a critical moment. We can't stand silent anymore. This is about change and this is about what's right. Yeah. Many of our forefathers and foremothers helped to build this city. 
made this city what it is, these hollow grounds that folks walk on and folks visit every single day, we help to build. This is a racial justice issue. This is about, this is about standing up for what is right. If democracy is to work in this country and around the world, D.C. must have the right to vote. We here at People for the American Way stand in solidarity. We are pushing our members, not just here in Washington, D.C., not just in the DMV, but all across the nation to say enough is enough. It is time for D.C. to have full representation. It is time for D.C. to be a state. It is time for D.C. to have the ability to rule itself, to make its own laws, to be able to stand on its own, to be the city, to be the state that we know we can be. We will not be silent. We want this Congress to act. We don't want this Congress to be passive and quiet and meek and say, hey, we'll push this to another day. The time is now for change. We're gonna stand up for democracy. Democracy does not work if D.C. does not become a state. Thank you. Good morning, D.C. So let me start by saying this. Yes, I am president of the Greater Washington Urban League, but I am here this morning because I'm not afraid of power and alligators. Are you with me? Okay. But let me also tell you this as well. In the context of this conversation, I am a native Washingtonian. Just heard one before me, there's another one here as now. Not many of us here, but the important thing that I want to underscore that you really need to know is that from childhood to adulthood, okay, I grew up in a city no vote in the Senate, okay, in the House. Childhood to adulthood. There are some 90 Urban League affiliates around the country. One of the things, and they deliver the service and we all deliver the goods every day to the folks that we serve. But one of the things that differ me from my 90 colleagues, unlike them, I do not have a vote in the Senate. My voice is unheard in the Senate here in the District of Columbia. So it is time that we make a change. That's why I'm here today. I'm going to say it again. I am not afraid of power and alligators, okay? That's the message that we're pushing. That's what we need to do to push statehood through. Now, final comment to you, I'll say this. When the CARES Act passed back in March, you know what that meant for the District of Columbia, right? We lost well over $700 million that did not come to the District of Columbia because we were not a state, okay? We were not a state, all right? We have to make those kind of changes, make those kind of impacts. Final thing I'll say to you is this. Uh, you know, the Revolutionary War was about taxation, okay? Here we are 245 years later, 245 years later, we still have taxation without representation in the District of Columbia. It is time now to make statehood permanent in the District of Columbia. Thank you, be blessed. Remember, I am not afraid, you should not be afraid of power and alliance. So we start this march today, that's a message, we gotta push it. Thank you, God bless you. We are here for our full rights, for statehood now. When do you want it? Now. Why do you want it? You deserve it as an American citizen. You don't have to accept the fact that the Congress denies you the representation that you deserve. You deserve it now. Stay good now. I'm executive director of Stand Up for Democracy in DC Coalition which was founded in 1997 for D.C. statehood. We didn't equate, equivoc equivocate about why we started. We had to start for D.C. statehood because the Congress stripped away all of our rights except parks and recreation. They can do that now, and you need to know that. We would be the only 
only black or brown state in the country. We need statehood now. Our ancestors, we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors, Hilda Mason, Josephine Butler, Julius Hobson. They were out there for us, and we have to continue to fight, fight, fight. Now. Good morning, can everybody hear me? Y'all look good. Y'all look real good out there. This is the first rally I've been to since COVID. This feels really good. It's way better than a Zoom meeting. So my name is Deanna Forster, and I'm the president of the Metro Washington Labor Council. But what that means is I represent the workers, proudly represent, honored to represent the workers that feed the people in Congress when they go to restaurants, that make sure that they stay in nice, clean hotels, that make sure that when they go to the grocery stores, they get the things that they need, but also represent the people inside those buildings that protected them when they were attacked. With that being said, they're also DC residents. Yes. And they deserve to have access to full citizenship. Yes. Growing up in DC, so I'm also a DC resident, proud War 7. Woo! I'm also with the DC public schools, any DC public school graduates or teachers. Woo! Praying we make it through this last week because Virtual learning is hard. <laughs> yeah. I'm also a mom. And one thing that I remember that made me really understand the importance of DC statehood was when I went on a field trip with my daughter. I chaperoned her school class to um, an art museum. And as I was walking through the art museum with her classmates, and we were looking at the exhibit, I noticed tourists taking pictures of her and her classmates. Very diverse group of kids, and I think they were surprised and excited to see them. And I felt as a mom I needed to protect my child from having those pictures taken of her. But I didn't want to scare her. I don't think the tourists meant anything bad by it. But then one felt her hair. And I felt violated, I felt disrespected, and I had to hold it together because my baby was there, the same one that asked is me, Mom, how come we don't have a voice in Congress? And I thought about that, and that's how I feel when I listen to the Republicans that come, live in this city while they're in session, enjoy our streets as tourists, but then say that we don't deserve a right to vote. In Congress, right? Our poor, meager selves can handle DC, but we have no voice or place in Congress. So I feel violated. Because when I hear those things, or when I hear that of the framers of the Constitution did not want us to have a voice, they also wanted me to be a slave. So, if this is the debate that you guys will not have on the floor, because you don't want to demonstrate the racism and the fear of giving more people access to vote in Congress, that somehow it's a political power game that we're playing. But it's not. Because the value of democracy means that every citizen has a voice in Congress. So this isn't a political game. This is what democracy looks like when DC has a voice. Thank you. Good morning, DC! Look at you all beautiful out here in the rain! Because nothing will stop us when we are determined to have our right to vote and we're determined to make sure that DC is the next state of the union.
this moment. A great injustice is ruling this country, and that is, is that D.C. is a colony. It's not a state. A colony has no senators. A colony has no regular voting members of Congress. We must, we must make D.C. a state. Think about this. Put on your imagination hat. If D.C. was a state, would we be talking about the January 6th commission not being held? If D.C. was a state, would we be talking about health care being an issue that's not spoken to fully in Congress? If D.C. was a state, would we be talking about the minimum wage not being raised to $15 an hour? Nationwide. You see, it's not just us in D.C. who suffers from the lack of statehood. It is the entire nation that is denied a real representative government. In this moment, we're saying to McConnell, we're saying to all the members of the Senate, pass, pass. D.C. statehood, free to vote, free D.C., free us this moment because we must, we must have our right, we must have our state, we need D.C. represented. The people of this nation need D.C. to be a state. This is not just an issue for the people here in this city, it's a huge issue. But how can Vermont, with less population, have two senators? How can other states with less population have two senators? How can we pay 20 more money to the federal treasury than 20 other states? And people tell us that we can't be a state? No! It is D.C. time! It is statehood time! Free to vote! 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 Thank you, my brothers and sisters! The Transformative Justice Coalition will be with you in this fight until it's won. We're gonna win D.C. statehood. We're gonna win the Foreign People Act. We're gonna win the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. We're gonna have justice in America. The morning is coming, and it's coming with our life. Thank you. Shout out to all the DC natives in the crowd. Come on, y'all can be a little louder than that. We DC natives, this our home, right? Shout out to the DC natives in the crowd. Can y'all believe how, how far this movement have gotten over the past 200 years? That's thanks to you all who have been organizing, going uh, in the streets, marching, rallying, and, and talking to senators all across the nation about why this matters to people here in Washington, D.C. The foundation of this country was built on the principles of what? No taxation without representation. Right now, we're not living up to our, our ideals as a country. The Constitution opens up and it says, we the people. We the people must mean all the people. It must mean the people here in Washington, D.C. who are disenfranchised from their voting rights. I brought some stats on my phone because I, I won't remember it if, I, if I don't write it down. 86% of D.C. voters had passed a referendum and supported D.C. statehood. 37 states have joined the union and, and have passed simple legislation saying that D.C. should be admitted as a state. Yes. The bill is constitutional, yes. and the people of D.C. are simply asking for fair and equal treatment for in their democracy. So I'm going to put it simple. If you are marching in the streets for Black Lives Matter this summer, then you should be marching for D.C. statehood. Yeah. If you are marching in the streets for George Floyd and cared about voting rights, then you should be marching for D.C. statehood. Yeah. If you care about racial justice and you're marching in the streets for racial justice, then you should be marching for D.C. statehood. Yeah. Because again, we are the home of the free, and everybody say it with me, we are the home of the free and the land of the brave. So right now, the Senate has to be brave and pass the D.C. Admissions Act to make D.C. the 51st state with 51 votes in the Senate. Thank y'all.
Lord have mercy. Okay, my name is Erin Jackson Hill, and I am the executive director of Alaskans Take a Stand. I want to thank Bo and Barbara for inviting us here. And oh my God, I'm really nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> DC statehood we support enfranchisement for all Americans and we are asking everybody here to stand up and fight back stand up stand up stand up that's right we don't have time for BS I can't add much more to what everybody has said but Alaskans do understand the fight we also had to wage a long battle to achieve statehood, so we stand with you. Alaska has roughly the same population as Washington, D.C., and we have two senators and one representative. Washington, D.C. has none. Well, we have one senator that works. Our country is treating every D.C. citizen as a second-class citizen. Are you a second-class citizen? No! Are you a second-class citizen? No! This is it. Our democracy is at stake. Across our beautiful country, the right to vote is under attack. We have to stand up and fight back against the racist policies that disenfranchise D.C. in the first place. Folks are talking about Jim Crow 2.0. Washington, D.C. still has the original Jim Crow. We have traveled thousands of miles to ask our senators to support total enfranchisement for all Americans. No, wait, I take that back. We are here to demand that America live up to the promise of liberty and justice for all. We stand with you in saying that until D.C. is a state and voting rights are secure, all Americans are under attack. Yes. From the 49th state to the 51st state, we welcome you. Yes. I close by saying, when I say D.C., you say statehood. D.C. This week is a critical week in the fight to defend our democracy. There are two pieces of legislation that are coming up uh, inside the United States. The For the People Act needs to be passed, and D.C. statehood needs to be passed. Here's what's at stake. Right-wing Republicans and their billionaire enablers are acting systematically to roll back voting rights all across the United States. Over 400 bills have been introduced in state legislature. Nearly a dozen have passed. Why? Why are Republicans so hell-bent on restricting the right to vote? Because they understand that when we the people stand up, when we the people raise our voices, we can overcome the forces of tyranny. They know that when we, the people, stand up and vote, we're going to pass health care for everyone. They know when we, the people, stand up and vote, we're going to fight for 15. They know when we, the people, stand up, we're going to fight to defend our climate. That is what's 
at stake. Brothers and sisters, what has happened in D.C., the suppression of our voices is now spreading like a cancer across the United States. And it is simple. The rich and the powerful do not want us to have a voice. They do not want progressive policies. And so what must we do? This weekend, we celebrated the first Juneteenth holiday or holy day. We've got to be, in the words of U.S. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, who helped shepherd Juneteenth through, we must be ever vigilant in the defense of our democracy, in the defense of our rights. Because, brothers and sisters, what happens is when we win elections like we did in November, the other side fights back. And that's why today we've got to send a powerful message, a powerful message to the United States Senate and to the President of the United States. Voting rights! Yeah. Voting rights! Yeah. Voting rights! Yeah. Voting rights! Yeah. Brothers and sisters, I want you to do more than just chant. I want you to take action. All of you who are online, or the hundreds of you who are gathered here, text 51st51ST to 52886. 51st to 52886. Stand with DC Vote. Stand with people all across the United States who are raising our voices in unison to defend our democracy. Voting rights! Yeah. Voting rights! Yeah. Thank you.